Hey guys, thanks, thanks for uh, agreeing to sit here and listen to me, right? I I wonder why we do that, but then I remember we sponsored the event, so <laughs> th th thanks for this. Uh, quick introduction, I'm Rishabh, co-founder and CEO at Pepper Content. I'm 24, me and Anurud started this company back in college, second year of uh, college, Bits Pilani, right? And I think uh, Bits Pilani is this very unique thing of where you don't need to go to school, you know, classes. So we had a lot of time to, you know, do something with it, right? So um, I think, you know, my presentation, to be honest, fades in front of what the last two have been, right? And what Nunmay probably did was the presentation I should be doing because it really showed the power of, you know, the modern digital world, what content means, right? Every ad that Mr. Ram just played was content created, right? The only difference is that now how content is created between a Nerolak and a Shahrukh ad and between what Bob Skincare is doing has evolved a lot, right? And uh, um, Nerolak is also catching up. And I think I would love to just, you know, talk about that, uh, you know, uh, slightly in, in my uh, presentation. So we are living in a content economy, right? Um, I like to say that, you know, the transaction, uh, you know, as the online GDP increase, that although the, the transaction happens through money, the currency is content, right? The decision is made when you view something, when you read something, when something is consumed, right? The decision is not made while purchasing, it's made while when you see or consume something and when you made make you know a sense that okay this is something that i want right and that's why it's a content economy right um we have moved from an industrial first approach to the information value based first approach right you know I, even if if you look at the narrow lack presentation right mr ram very uh, you know uh, rightly said right earlier it was paint now it's low smell you know, low VOC pain, right? Now it's you need to sell more, you need to give the inherent properties of that very pain, right? Which wasn't the case, say, 20, 30 years ago, right? So it's information value and even, you know, when uh, Nunme said about war, right? Every consumer is, is has a, almost the entire world's information in their hands. And if you don't get on that train, you probably are, you know, left behind, right? Then you, you are a brand, um, you're an individual, you're a politician, right? Marketer. You are competing for today's most important asset, which is called asset, you know, attention, right? Um, uh, I think there's a very interesting concept of um, attention, uh, you know, uh, deliberation, where the first 10 seconds of anything that you create, you know, that is the only time when people will consider you, right? And if you get them hooked on right there, right? That is when you actually can make an impact, right? So you are te technically fighting for that attention, and everyone in this room, right, is fighting for the same thing. Right, and you're probably competing the likes of celebrities, right? Uh, there's so much content available. I definitely cannot fight with the Kardashians, right? Um, people dancing on the internet. I think we all of us, all of us, go through you know 10, 20 reels a day. You know, see new trends emerge almost every day to new songs, right? And that is where a lot of attention, a lot, lot of digital time is being spent, and political coverage, right? Every political party, every political minister, right, now has a peer agency, has a content arm, you know, digital arms, right, where they're trying to create content on a scale that probably no brand can even possibly imagine, right? So what do we do that, do, do in that case? So in, in this ocean of content, right, you need to create a mave that makes it to the shoreline, right? The fight is not even now of, you know, creating something, it's about creating something and getting it to the people, right? For example, 694,000 hours of video are streamed every minute, right? 2,500 new videos are uploaded every hour, right? And 6 million blog posts are being put out in the internet every day, right? And with the advent of something like a chat GPT, imagine that 6 can go to 60 million as soon as tomorrow. Right? And I think that is where, how do you thrive in this content economy? That's the question, you know, we all would love to answer. That's the question we at Peppercorn and Hope are answering for some of our clients. And that's the uh, question we would love to answer with you as well, if we get the chance. Uh, Pepper Content, uh, in the last five years, we have worked with over 2,500 brands across the country and some globally as well, right? And uh, deliver over 100,000 content projects, right? This amounts to roughly 10 to 15 lakh of individual content pieces that we have created, right? And we have host of data, uh, you know, experience, knowledge about how they do, what, what works, what doesn't work, right? 
and I think this also gave us the opportunity to work with marketers around the world, right? I think these marketers highlighted four major challenges and I, I hope you all relate to this challenge if, when you think of content and when you think of marketing, right? Yeah, these four challenges, right? First of all is creating and publishing quality content and skill. First, you know, hiring a team, you know, setting up, uh, you know, say getting an agency on board. You know, the creation process is already too, so much to and fro. And then once that is done, you need to send that content to the developer. The developing team uploads that on the WordPress and that's again takes us some time lag, right? Then secondly is optimizing content marketing and workflow and operation, right? Most of us, most of the companies that we first onboard have been doing a lot of content, but they do that on WhatsApp, they do that on emails, they do that on, you know, random drives that they share with each other and so much of that content gets lost in a company's life cycle right because every team gets replaced the brand managers the content managers get replaced and all that information that they had created all that content that they had created just stays lies there you know not being used right and that's inefficiency at its best then integrating content and data across multiple platforms ROAS as a term, right? So when 2008, when Facebook came in, right? Um, I think nobody believed that Facebook ad engine can become what it became today. But it became that just because of it could prove its definite ROAS, right? Return on ad spends, that's every marketer's, you know, you know, jargony word that they use in a meeting and tell, okay, we have done this, this is what we are bidding to the table. But when you look on the content side, when you look, go to an SEO person, right? What is ROCC, return on content created? Nobody really knows, right? I invested five lakhs with an agency. I'm getting brand recall. I'm getting traffics. I'm getting visitors. But if, is that converting? Is that what you are, you know, uh, is that, you know, are you really getting traffic from your brand, right? Uh, from your competitors, right? Nobody really digs deeper into that, right? We are, the Elven metrics are traffic, and I think that's what sites are most, most of us, right? But as, you know, um, paid marketing, you know, saturates, right? As people wants to move their dependence away from uh, paid marketing, I think that is where content marketers, uh, you know, marketer, you know, organic marketing needs to really step up and tell what they are bringing to the table, right? To have an equal seat at the table. And I think for the last is the proving the ROI of content, right? Um, you know, content both in terms of brand awareness and ROI of content in both of them lead acquisition and you know business acquisition, right? And I think that is what we hope to you know solve for in the long term, right? Uh, addressing some of these aspects already and some very very soon, right? How um, and we do that through a very interesting uh, combination of human plus AI. When ChatGPT was launched, our investors, all our you know partners, all our well wishers, you know, messaged us, right? What's what's next, right? Uh, because ChatGPT is here. You know, what, what are you going to do, right? I think the the best companies are not built um, against waves. They're built on tides, right? They're built you know on top of you know uh, trends that are you know t overtaking the entire world. And we wanted to do the same, right? Just for your uh, information, we got on the GPT-3, you know, Balwagon almost two years ago, the only company in India to have done so, right? We have peppertype.ai launched in February of 2020, um, and it has over 400,000 users from across the globe, right? And have, we have traded over a billion words till now, right? So that was already there, and ChatGPT came in and just made the whole thing very famous. Uh, everyone in this room probably has used it or has asked their teammates to use this, right? So I think we believe that human plus AI is the, is the future. And uh, people usually ask, will AI replace humans? AI will replace humans who doesn't know how to use AI. And I think that's what we uh, believe in. Um, you know, I think in terms of solutions, the first is Pepper AI, generative AI uh, for teams to scale content, right? For example, we, there's a big company in US, uh, RV Share, where we are creating around 10,000 content pieces for them every month with the help of AI and a human editing layer. Right? That gives them agility, scale, and cost effectiveness at the same time, while being while with the, the with the right set of you know uh, keywords being there in the in the content, which helps them get the right tra kind of traffic. Right? Now, if you have to do 10,000 just through human writers, that probably will be a very, very mammoth task, right? And I think that is where you need to be smart. We need to be smart as an as an industry as to where does an AI part come play, right? If you're creating a brochure, if you're creating a brand um, voice document, right? You wouldn't want an AI to write it. You would want to protect it with all your heart and pour your soul into it, right? But if you're creating templated 
maybe content that can you know once after one point of time can be automated to some extent you should definitely do that because that is where efficiency of the entire org can come in right then you know when it comes to content right there are two there we define content into 10 grades right 0 to 10 right 1 to 10 right we believe 1 to 4 is the kind of content that will be automated through you know ai through chat gpt but you know high value content the 5 to 10 right is something where you still need experts right if you have to if you have to get something someone to write up you know article on say paint or a research paper on paint you would need someone like mr ram to get that written for you right i don't think chat gpt can give you the kind of insights uh, you know someone like him can bring to the table right so i think uh, that's where we believe in working with a top 3% talent right um, this wasn't the hypothesis when we started we believe to work with all creators right and i think in our learnings we burnt our hands the wrong way but now we have realized that the companies don't look for you know 100 people they look for 10 people but which can provide them the best quality and i think we have we have made uh, you know strong progress towards you know getting to the top talent in india to work with us and you know give that service to the brands that work with us right and then the last, which is the important part, is the end-to-end -end automation of content workflows for SEO localization, right? You need one single place where you think of what keyword you go after, where you come up with topics, where you create the content, where you, you know, optimize that content for SEO and other things, right? And then where you publish that content and then close the loop while after getting inputs as to how that content is performing, what you should do on that content. Should you refresh that content? Should you, you know, remove that content right should you repurpose that content right so i think all of that insights i think is lost you know because of array of things that we try to do but there are some very low hanging fruits you know i'm pretty sure at least 50 percent of the companies here have around 1500 you know pages on their website have we ever went back and asked okay out of these 1500 how many are still relevant how many can be you know tweaked to some extent to get our traffic immediately up right and i think that is what we are trying to do right the goal is not to just become content churning partners but to really create content that impacts and that can either be through repurpose recreation or new creation and i think that is what we try to do you know i think that's the, the goal of this uh, you know company on which we built is make content marketing work for you and the goal is you know i think uh, we were talking to the cmo of hubspot right and they, they he said a very interesting thing that you know um, a paid marketing is like burning a dollar and content marketing is like putting that dollar in the bank right and i think we want to be your bank uh, we have a booth outside you know we have some interesting goodies and uh, we have a lot of people you know if you see the pepper content logo go to talk to them and learn what how we are doing all of this but thank you thank you you are you have been an amazing audience and i hope to interact with you all of you soon thank you